Hello and welcome to a brand new tutorial. Today I want to show you how you can create this cool photo inside the frame kind of look see through thingy mob um, inside Canva. Let's dive in. So hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Jackie and I'm a graphic designer and a brand specialist, but I love teaching business owners how they can use Canva for themselves in really practical ways. And this one's a bit of a fun tutorial. It's less brand related, like I normally like to talk to and more just, this is a fun, cool thing to try. Um, I want to preface this by saying this is the easy version of doing this. There is a more complex way I'm not going to go into today because I haven't fully nailed it for a DIY yet, um, but I want to get to it soon. Um, so stay tuned for that one day in the future. But for now, this is a nice, simple way to do this hack. So to do this, all I've done is added in little frames for each letter and filled it in with a photo. Now, there are a few things you need to think through to get this right. So I want to make sure I step you through that first. Um, and then that way you can make sure you're doing this design and doing this hack really, really beautifully. So I'm going to just open up a new page. Obviously, you can do this on any size design that you're doing. Um, it's totally just a matter of how you're applying this design. Let's go to first you want to open up, just add in a background. I'm just going to do plain purple for this. Go to the elements panel over on the side here and you want to go down to just scroll, 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 scroll until you get to the frame section. Frames is where you can insert images into any kind of shape. If you haven't used frames before, get into frames because there's like hundreds and hundreds of shapes in here. The best thing about it is that you can actually search frames as well. You can actually see a bit of a hint where I'm going to go here with the letters tab here. Um, so if I just scroll down here, you'll see there's lots of different fonts and letters that I can choose from for this, but you'll see there's only two. There's only this one here, which is cute. And this one here, which isn't what I want. So what I'm going to do is show you how you can find some other variations and use those in your business as well. So first up, you can actually just, when you're in that frames panel, you can search any random letter. You can literally just search letter and it will come up with a lot. Um, and you'll see here that we've got some nice serif fonts. We've got some sans serif fonts. We've got some skinny sans serif fonts and some bold sans serif fonts. And we've got some um, slightly more funkier ones as well. Um, and there's lots of different ones you can play with in here. So have a look at the different options that are here. And what I recommend doing if you're doing this for your business is choosing one that's closest to your business's brand style, um, the closest font that you've got to your business, um, or just using something randomly wild that it's just not even trying to relate. I guess that's an option as well. Or if you're just doing this for fun, then obviously just pick the one that you're kind of vibing with the most. Um, then what you want to do is just ignore that and start to think about, okay, what am I going to create? So for me right now, I'm going to do, I've got a zebra on my wall over here. I'm going to type in zebra. So instead of just scrolling through here and trying to find the Z, you can literally just search Z. Obviously for those in America, yes, we do call Zs Zs in Australia. Um, you can see all the different Zs. They're all here ready for me. So I'm going to choose the one that I want. So you can choose this one here or this one here. What you want to do is just make sure you choose the same kind of style for all of your letters, unless you're doing a cute little collage look, in which case you're purposely mismatching them. Um, I'm going to do this one here that's a little bit more of a fancy um, serif kind of font. So I'm going to add that in. I'm not going to touch it now. You know, I, I went to touch it, but I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to put all my letters in and then I'm going to touch it. So I'm going to type in E for zebra. Okay. So once all your letters are in, just grab all of them, select them by selecting all of them. You can just click your mouse and drag to select over everything, or you can put your mouse on the position tool and go to layers tab and click and select all by holding down your shift key and grabbing all of them in between. Next, I'm going to make this the size I want it to be. So say I want to make it around this size. Doing that all at once just means that they're all going to stay the exact same size, which is just so wildly helpful. And then going to arrange. So zebra, Z, E, B, R, A. Okay. I'm going to grab those again and then make it a bit smaller. Now you can obviously play with what's called the kerning. So the spacing between the letters to whatever you want. You could have like really wide spacing like this. Um, and you can see here that Canva kind of helps me to know how far things are spaced across. It's got saying it's 9 and 5 between each of these. However, that doesn't always visually work. Sometimes because of the way each letter is shaped, sometimes the, the exact measurement spacing doesn't actually look right. There's a whole art to kerning. I won't get into that now, mainly because I don't know all of the ins and outs of it. But in essence, doing a rough measurements is good, but then visually aligning it by eye is going to be better in the long run. So I'm just going to bring this out a little bit. I want to have it quite close, but I'm just going to do this visually. I can even just click on a letter and use my arrow keys on my keyboard to get it a little bit more specific um, and just spreading those out in a way that looks kind of even, um, but not too even. The next thing I'm going to do now is insert a photo. 
into these frames. Now, I'm going to teach you something that you really need to do first, and that is to go to the file tab up here and go view settings and show rules and guides, or you can press shift R. That's going to bring these little rulers on the sides and the bottom, because this is going to help us to make sure that the photo that we put in is arranged in a way that actually consistently goes across and moves across each of these letters really beautifully. So I'm going to just pop in some rulers now. So to pop in a ruler, I just have to grab, hover my mouse at the top here, click and drag. And I'm going to click and drag down here. So I'm actually just even going to go to the elements tab over here and type in zebra because let's just put a zebra in here. Why not? I'm going to go to photos, find a picture of a zebra that I'm really loving. Let's do this one because I love a good sunset. I'm going to add this in. So I'm going to drag this photo and you'll see if I hover it over the letter, it tries to fill it in. If I pop it over here, then it tries to fill it in the background. I want it to fill in inside the letter. You'll see here, this is just, if I just double click, you can actually access the photo inside that. You'll see that it's just filled in that one letter, but I actually want it to spread across this whole word. So I'm gonna make this a lot larger. You'll see why I've got the rulers now, which is actually a little bit less relevant when I've got a full square photo, to be honest with you. I'm gonna bring it so that my zebra is inside my photo here. I wanna make sure, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make sure that it's um, as wide as my image. So you can see that the, the photo is going from here all the way to here. Um, but I also wanna make sure that it's, I'm arranging it the same height the whole way. So I'm actually gonna bring my ruler here down to where the bottom of the photo lines up. And I'm actually just gonna delete this top ruler because I don't have a top for the photo because it's actually just going off the edge of the artboard. Um, so if I press, if I'd press done, or if I just click out of that, you'll see that it's filled in that photo right in there. I'm gonna do this exact same thing over and over again until I get all of my letters. I'm gonna click on the photo, drag it in, double click, and then bring this photo so it's as wide as my design. You could make it as wide as you want to. I'm just doing it as wide as my design because that's a nice consistent way I can manage it. Then I'm going to drag it up so that it lines up with the bottom of my, where I put that ruler at the bottom here. Now it just doesn't have to be like exact. Like I wouldn't stress about like zooming in and getting a pixel perfect because people's eyes aren't going to be able to tell if you've got a pixel perfect between each of the letters and the gaps that are there, but close enough is going to Great, create some really great results. I'm going to unclick out of that, then do it again. Amazing. So you see, actually, I haven't even got the sunset in this design because my zebra cut it off at the start. But you can see these uh, go perfectly between each other, which is so great. But you want to make sure that as you do this, that this is the definitely the photo that you wanted to do because if I, you can see if I insert a new photo, it doesn't re-crop it down and, and doesn't re-insert it as I've got it inserted already. I have to realign and adjust everything as accordingly. So um, just making sure that you're doing that the right time the first time, unless you want to go through that whole process again, which can get quite tedious, especially if you've got more than five letters to work with. Um, all right, next, you can pretty much be finished. Like this is a, this is a great design. You could, you can add it, add the background color in and tweak that a little bit. I might make mine a different color, or I might use the eyedropper tool to um, sample some colors, maybe even from the top of that sunset there. That's looking really cute. Or I can add in lots of different things in here, whatever I want. It's all totally up to you. My face color has changed now from the orange of this design. That's great. Um, the last thing I want to mention is just in case you want to do some, something funky with it, I can actually reinsert this picture in, but not put it inside the frame. You can see here as I try to move that around, it's actually going inside the frame accidentally. It's trying to go inside that E there. If I don't want that to happen, but I find it happening, I can actually just hold down my command key on my Mac, um, probably control on PC, and uh, it, won't, it won't insert into that frame again. I just have to make sure I hold down control anytime I'm trying to do that. So I actually just um, go to position here and move my, my zebra from being at the top, which it was down to the bottom underneath everything. And then I could actually even change the transparency of this like so. And you can see that I've kind of put the picture in the background behind. So it's kind of connecting everything together. So that's another option you can kind of play with if you want to, especially when you know how you've laid out the picture and you know you've done a good job of putting everything between each other. You can have that little design in the background of it to kind of help connect things together. Or not. It's totally up to you, but I wanted to mention that as an idea as well. Or for me, I might even choose to like crop this up here and have some of this nice sunset at the top, or I could even have it covering over half of the design. So many options for you to try in here, but have a, have a bit of a play with that and, and, and experiment and see what you can create. Um, Cause there are some really fun things you can do with that. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Like I said, there are some more intricate and more advanced ways you can do this in terms of maybe even using your own brand font, but that's too hard to explain this video right now. So I'll put that in another video into the future. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you for another tutorial very soon. Bye.